Good morning, Michael here, and today our devotion is coming from Isaiah 49, verse 13. But to give it a little bit of a context, would like to read Isaiah 5 to verse 7, give a bit of commentary on verse 7, before we get to our index verse. Isaiah 49, verse 5. And now saith Jehovah that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, and that Israel be gathered unto him. For I am honorable in the eyes of Jehovah, and my God is become my strength. Yea, he saith, it is too light a thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith Jehovah, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall worship, because of Jehovah that is faithful, even the Holy One of Israel, who hath chosen thee. And so Gil, commentary on verse 7, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, writes, These are all the titles of the Father of Christ, who is the Jehovah, the self-existent being, and from whom all have their being. The Redeemer of Israel, being concerned with his son in the redemption of his people and in the contriving and settling the method of it and bringing it about and his holy one or the holy one of Israel the sanctifier of them together with the blessed spirit who speaks the following words not to the prophet Isaiah or Eben Ezra nor to the people of the Jews as a Tagram, Jarachi, and Kimchi, but to Christ, to him who man despised, whom the Jews despised because of the meanness of his descent, parentage, and education, because of his doctrines, disciples, and followers, and because his kingdom was not of this world, and came not with observation or whom a soul despiseth, or despised in soul, heartily despised, as Christ was, or who despiseth his soul, or life, as Christ did his, for the sake of the people for whom he freely laid his life down, and made his soul an offering for sin. To him whom the nation abhorreth, <laughs> and made his soul an offering to him, to him who this nation abhorreth. The nation of the Jews abhorred Christ, his person, doctrine, and miracles. They hated him and would not have him to rule over them. They persecuted him and sought to slay him, and at last delivered him up to the Romans to be crucified to a servant of rulers, of Jewish rulers, in subjection to them, being made under the law of Gentile rulers, paying tribute to Caesar, and when scourged by Pilate, and crucified by his order, which was the usual death of servants of slaves. But though he was so ill-used, despised and abhorred, he is encouraged by his divine Father, and great glory and honor are promised him. Kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship. They shall see the glory and majesty of Christ, and rise up in reverence of him, and fall down before him and worship him, which has had its accomplishment in parts in Constantine, Theodosius, Valentinian and other Christian princes, and will have a further fulfillment in the latter days. <laughs> because the Lord <laughs> that is faithful. Wow, 
Let's get to our index first. Which is verse 13. And it's subheaded, A Mountain Choir. <laughs> Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. So he comments, So sweet are the comforts of the Lord, that no, not only the saints themselves may sing of them, but even the heavens and the earth may take up the song. It takes something to make a mountain sing, and yet the prophet summons quite a choir of them, Lebanon and Syrian, and the high hills of Bashan and Moab. He would set them all singing because of Jehovah's grace to his own Zion. May we not also make mountains of difficulty and trial and mystery and labor become occasions for praise unto our God? Break forth into singing, O mountains! <laughs> this word of promise that our gods will have mercy upon his afflicted has a whole peal of bells connected with it. Hear their music, sing, be joyful, break forth into singing. The Lord would have his people happy because of his unfailing love. He would not have us sad and doubtful. He claims from us the worship of believing hearts. He cannot fail us. Why should we sigh or sulk as if he would do so? Oh, for a well-tuned harp. Oh, for voices like those of the cherubim before the throne. Oh, how sweet that must be. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Have a blessed day, everyone. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Until next time, Michael here.